Gentlemen, we're going to find out. Here he is. Fisher on the track and in the field. Let me pop it off, pull me to the biggest Baby girl, come top it off It's a parade in my city Knock it off, that made some pages Just to sell me, but I I'm Marcellus Moore, here with Texas Track and Field. This is my documentary on the Women's National Championship. Man. <laughs> nah, I mean, where do I even get started? All the way back last fall, coming off the, coming off a, of, Men winning the national championship indoor the previous year. Both both teams, both men and women, just coming off national championship runner ups. Uh, we just we knew we had something kind of special early on. Um, you could really tell with a lot of the girls kind of coming back. Um, it's the energy, the aura that these girls just possessed early on in this season, all the way back to the fall, even really before we started practicing the, the chemistry. Everything really was just clicking. Um, another year before, we had some some real elite girls. I, I remember some real elite girls. And when basically everybody returned, we just knew it was going to be something special. We had, I want to say, we had the most people in the, in the NCAA going, going to world champs. And that was just unreal. I think we had 16. 16 people on, on, on Texas track and field made it to the world champs. And it was just like the confidence, the aura, everything. When when it all came came down to it that fall and we started training, um, we just knew we had something special. Work was hard though, work was hard. <laughs> I, I, watched, I watched them put in a lot of time um, the energy Coach Flo came in with was was way different than the previous year. Um, really just wanted to focus on weeding out the bad energy. And uh, so we had some people end up leaving that may, maybe have been some key components um, to this national championship. But it was more about the vibe of like the team. I will say that. It was definitely more about the vibe of the team um, coming off the year prior, um, and that, that that's really the difference between first and second, um, the little things on a, on a team. Um, so it was it was really exciting to just what watch them grow throughout the season. Um, but yeah, like I said, like when the fall when the fall started, training was hard. Um, we got right into it. Work was hard. Coach Flo was on everybody, but like you just you just kind of knew. Um, you had Rashida Adelake returning, um, and at the time she had no no NCAA medals actually, besides the four by one. Like the four by one, obviously had back to back national championships. But uh, you had her returning, Julian Alfred coming back, um, Kevona Davis. So I'm talking a lot of a lot of talent in this in the sprint room on top of like Maryland, um, Noura, Thrower, just unbelievable. Like all American, four, like three, four time all American, Val, Valerie Tobias, she 800 runner, two time all American. So it was just like, everything was clicking on all cylinders. You had your fourth year, your fifth years. You had young people step up. Like Kevin has always been kind of like the baby of the group. Um, and this year was like, we just elevated her from being the baby of the group to she's she's one of our top dogs now. Like ended up being the anchor of the four by one. Um, and so when you look at the the overall team dynamic, 
You just knew. You just knew. All the way back to the fall. You just knew. This was this was the team. If there was anybody to get get a national championship, it would be them. And to get it done in the fashion that they did it, like there there's no team that comes close on the women's side. This this was an all star team. You knew all the way back to media day, like you knew you knew back to media day these girls had something special you knew it <laughs> UT horns up always I'm about to show y'all why we are team full of steppers you ain't even recording are you welcome to media day you know the vibes we're out here hey, hey, <laughs> Eagles beat to the street, flowers bout to put on yeah, the grave I'm wishing when it's time that my grandbaby do the same Look in your eyes, mama, you full of pain I'm so <laughs> sorry that I never changed Baby, mama, I'm trippin', oh, so now can you forgive me? Smoke in my lungs when I'm wishing I need the book that's been written I'm on a quest, they left on running trail Ooh, now I ain't go to heaven cause I live in hell mm. Peter Pan, dope tan, dope man, no love, throw it in, blown in Cause I have an ACL J Lookin' at you, gon' get your bust you buck, bro, try to jake That's a new double-up truck and that's a stolen photo J I done wanted the wrong time Different groups with different kind of colors on And they all got guns, I've been waving, but nobody slow down Life like Soprano. If I'm being completely honest, training started off rough. I was getting whooped <laughs> in fall practice. Um, but I'm the type of person where I have to get seasoned into the workout. Like I have my body has to adjust off of like summer and like taking a break. So once I like seasoned and adjusted, then workouts begin to be not that hard. Training last year was probably the hardest thing I've actually ever done. Um, the training in my previous school was definitely not as intense. Um, we didn't have the talent that Texas had here, so it was definitely not anything I, I had experienced before. Um, like you said, it was all very new and it was just, at some points I really didn't even think I was gonna make it through the fall, much less the season. <laughs> so that was yeah that was it was intense in just one word the ladies spent hours on end getting after it just working and when they weren't working out they spent time together they had great camaraderie it was almost like a bond or like a, a sisterhood that they had that you just kind of knew when they were going to be together that sparks will fly and it's just no ifs ands or buts How's the fall training? Um, I think training with these ladies, um, day in and day out, you kind of see what, you know, who we who we are around, who you're working with. And I think that even from fall training, I had the realization that we have some great ladies. This is the most cohesive and the most like generous, like, honestly, this is the best group of people I've ever like met. There were no animosity whatsoever. Everyone just wanted what was best for each other. And I've never felt that before. There was just, even at my old school, there was always this, oh, like we're friends, but you're my enemy. You know what I mean? Like on the track, we're like, we're not friends. Like we're, I feel like here, people could separate between track and the real world. You know what I mean? And I feel like that's something that most people can't do. There's a lot of genuine people here. There's a lot of people who actually just want the best for you, who if they're doing better than you, um, you celebrate them. And if you're doing better than them, they celebrate you. There was, I honestly felt no animosity. I felt no one was trying to tear anyone down to uplift themselves. I feel like we were honestly all just working to pull each other up. And I've never felt that before I got here. So that was very new and very much necessary. It's always good to have like people who are, I mean, better than you, but like not better than you in a sense, just to like, they have their strong points and you have yours. So whatever you're not good at they can help you to better yourself and you can help them better them at what they're not good at so i feel like i got that out of the group that i trained with last year with juju and um esme 
Rashida sometimes. Um, and also having them on the 4x1 was... Because we were so good to each other. We were so comfortable. Um, it felt like home. It felt like we were a family. First meet of the year, traveling to Louisville. Um, everybody's dripped out, really just ready to handle business. And we're doing off events. You see some people got their game face on and some people are just getting ready to shake the dust off. Um, that's really what the first meet of the year was for. And you just see the ladies just really ready to run. One meet, girls just set the track on fire, giving themselves the number one ranking. And this is where you just start to get changed. Every single time they step foot on the track, it's like, national record, collegiate record, um, number one time in college. And you just start to see over and over and over again, just a pure dominance. And the girls already kind of knew that they were going to dominate this year. It was just one of them things where they put the whole country on notice. And when they pulled up to me, so it would just be like, oh shoot, there's Texas track and field. Um, you're talking about a team that went seven back-to-back -back weeks being the number one team in the country, so like there was a pure dominance. It was just like they're hitting on all cylinders from the jumps to the throws, uh, to sprints, to the 800, like every event is just Texas, one, two, three, Texas, one, two, three. It's just like they cannot be stopped. So seeing them perform was just unreal. Heading into conference week, there was just no team that was even in the ballpark. Um, it was just Texas by a landslide. There was no doubt in anybody's mind that Texas women's was gonna come away with a conference championship. The conference championship was at Texas Tech. Um, and if anybody knows about Lubbock, Lubbock is just a hostile territory for any Longhorns. Um, with the women being ranked number one, though, it was really just a target on their back. Everybody kind of had their sights set out to knock off Texas. And rightfully so though. The meet started off exceptionally well. Everybody advancing to finals, um, you have Juju who broke the collegiate record in the prelim. Um, Kev runs the number six time all time. So the ladies are just juiced up. Everything that's supposed to happen at a conference championship is happening. Everybody's qualifying and the dominance is just being shown again. Um, nobody's really losing their respective races. Anybody who is ranked high um, continue to just be ranked high and show why Texas is Texas. People were winning who weren't even necessarily seated to win. Um, so it wasn't a bad showing at all. But unfortunately, Oklahoma State was coming with a vengeance in the other events that weren't necessarily our strong suit in the distance events. So Texas has been a sprint-heavy school forever. So our girls had showed domination in, in the sprints and the jumps, but our distance team isn't necessarily the strongest and can't really compete with some of the other schools. Oklahoma State was having the meat of their life um, on the distance side while we were having the meat of our life on the sprint side. Um, unfortunately, though, we weren't able to balance it out. Um, and while we thought we were just putting on a dominant performance, so were they. Oklahoma State ended up coming out victorious, and this one actually put the dagger in our women's hearts. Oh, gosh. Um, actually, coming off of high school, um, all I knew was winning team titles. So when I came, when I got here and I heard that we are like on a winning streak, but not nationals, but like big 12s. Um, it felt natural to me and losing kind of took a piece of my heart, you know, cause like you're used to a thing and then something like drastic happens and like that's a big change. It's like, it's hard. After falling short of the conference titles, the ladies just had a chance to regroup, get back to training, and really just take the next couple weeks to get ready for the national championship. The eyes were still on the prize to come home with gold for one of the major titles in the season. Going into indoor Nats, the ladies just kind of had a fresh mindset. They started off competing really well. Um, everybody was just kind of hitting all, on all cylinders, much like conference. All the women there did exactly as they were expected to do, and they were fighting up against a tough Arkansas team, a tough Kentucky team, but it wasn't nothing that they didn't think they could they could challenge. As the meet went by, Julian just really started to put on a show. Um, won the 60, won the 200, and really just did everything she could to help out the team to win. 
Putting her in true Bowerman contention as the best collegiate athlete. It's all Julian Alfred. Alfred is a different runner this year. She has been on another level. Although Julian put on a show, the women fell short again, being national runner-ups after being ranked number one in the country going into the national championship. We were hurt, definitely, seeing that we were only, I think, about two or three points short from winning. Um, we were definitely hurt about the situation, uh, just placing second, because that was, I think that was our third time getting second place and just knowing the hard work that we put in and just falling short. I mean, things don't always go how we want it to, but we use that as motivation for the outdoor season. Coach Phil had to do a good job of just making sure the women took a step back and just decided to, to shake back off of the indoor season. Although it was a little disappointing, like his job was to motivate and be an impact. And I feel like that's exactly what he did. <laughs> I think Coach Flo and I has a great relationship, one that's just not spoken of. Um, but I met Coach Flo at the age of 17 when he recruited me to come to Texas. So we had that, we have that good relationship with each other. And now over the years, we've gotten like a lot, um, it's gotten better and a lot stronger. And I think that knowing what Coach Flo wants and also he knows what our goals are and talking to him day in and day out has kind of helped, you know, with the team chemistry and just us as individuals. <laughs> Coach Flo is... <laughs> I don't I don't even know how to explain it. He's just he's just like a parent. <laughs> he's just he's just very much a parent. Like he honestly teaches me a lot about myself. He honestly has more belief in me than I do in myself at sometimes. Um he always sees the best out of every situation and any individual. Um but he's also like hard on you when you need to be because you know some people just can't you can't really like get to where you need to be if you're always being coddled. And I do respect him for that because sometimes being coddled is what causes you to kind of fall back. And he doesn't do that. I think he's just, honestly, I don't think he's had a bad relationship with anyone that I've seen this year or last year. So he's just a great person. Like, I honestly respect him a thousand. It was just happy. I was just so happy. I hated indoor. I just wanted to end. Um, I was just so, so happy. I mean, the two weeks of camp flow were terrible. Um, but I feel like going from indoor to outdoor, it was just so much like, so we knew what we knew what to expect this time. We knew all the talent we had, especially since most of the people for indoor, you know, outdoors have different events. So obviously like they could finally start their actual event. And like, we knew we were getting points from that. We knew we were getting points from all these different places. So it was just exciting. It was exciting to start. I was ready. <laughs> hey, what's up? This is Bijan Robinson here. This is Texas Relays. Everybody come out here and support. Y'all yeah, see it? Everybody hey, was just on Big Texas. Got to represent. The that was happening. It was going get it done, baby. Hook it. It was definitely a time for redemption. They fell short twice indoor season, and it was time for them to go ahead and make a statement. As soon as the outdoor season began, the ladies started off with a vengeance. They took down the collegiate record in the 4x100 meter dash put up multiple collegiate leads in multiple different events to eventually put themselves back at number one, once again, going into conference and nationals. The ladies couldn't be stopped. They had their eyes set out on one mission, and that was to win both the conference title and the national title. There was nothing that could get in their way. For the out, for Big 12's outdoor, it's like we feed off of each other's energy and not just the women, but the men. So. Even if one of the guys don't win, but we see that he gave like his best effort, um, we go off of that and that helps to carry over into our performance to just like, okay, he didn't have a good race or she didn't have a good race. So let's go out there and do what we got to do so that, you know, everybody can feel good. Everybody can celebrate. I mean, winning an individual title is a different a way different feeling from winning a team title but at least you can say i contributed or whether it's you gave points or you were in the stand supporting um it makes a huge difference all the difference was made when the texas ladies put it together and won the conference championship 
They got their lick back against Oklahoma State in dominant fashion. And this was only the beginning to their revenge tour. Week in and week out, you just saw these ladies put on a performance that the whole country had to just watch. Um, it was it was exciting, but at the same time, everybody knew what they were coming for. Big 12 title, scratch that off the list. Now going into the national definitely hits different than winning like big 12s or indoor i think that was the best feeling yes you win as an individual but winning a national title as a team is just surreal and one of the one of the best feelings still is there i still go back to rewatch um ncaa blaze in the outdoor season this is the smiles on everybody's faces and just how happy that we are with each other and just the team chemistry. But winning it together, I would take that over winning a team title, um, an individual title, definitely. Because the feeling that I got from winning as a team was so much better than winning at, you know, just individually. But obviously you have to win individually to give your team some points, you know, to win a team title. But I feel like winning as a team was just such a great feeling that nobody can take away from you.